Happy Fitness Friday from Wall Lake, Michigan here in suburban Detroit. I'm here again with Jennifer Lawrence, owner, manager, group fitness instructor, and personal trainer here at the award-winning location for Anytime Fitness. And congratulations on another great year. When we saw her, I interviewed her last year, and I'm so glad to be back, and I thank, thank you for your time today. And folks, you know, on Fitness Fridays, as well as non-Fitness Fridays, I'm always highlighting the concept of outliers. Go again, you always see me using my hand to draw, the outliers and the bell curve and essentially what that means where most people, most organizations, most franchises fall in the middle, the average, the mean, the median, the average. But you always have people who are out front and those are the positive outliers, those are the award winners, those people are making things happen, whether it's LeBron James in basketball, Serena Williams on the tennis court, or Jennifer Lawrence here in Wall Lake, Michigan at Anytime Fitness. Um, and I was studying the trends for Anytime. Congratulations again on 2016 as well as 2015, number one global franchise. Um, you guys are kicking butt. Uh, but what's more important is I was looking at the growth trends and Anytime Fitness by this time next year, they should have about 4,000 franchises and hers is award winning. And so that says a lot. So she's a positive outlier amongst all these franchises. And so she's truly the best of the best. And I'm sorry I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> Thank you. But it's so important. But what I want to talk about here, we talk about motives and getting things, getting to, into things for the right reasons is so important in fitness in particular. And so when we think about your fitness journey, and I know you shared with us last time how your fitness journey started when the other girls growing up were playing with dolls and things like that. You were the fitness instructor. Mm -hmm. So it's been a long, long-term journey for you. Um, how did you know when was the right time to start a franchise? Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't think you ever know when the right time is. Um, for myself and my family at the time, it was just kind of a timing thing where we were um, just looking for a new opportunity and, um, you know, my husband was looking for a new career and we were kind of both just looking for a change. and. Um, we just kind of, and I knew it was something that I wanted to do in the long term, and so we just started looking into it and just thought we'd kind of go for it. But I think it's one of those things you don't know until you just do it, and I don't think there's ever a right time. But um, yeah. <laughs> you just kind of jump into it and, um, you know, give it your all and know that, you know, whatever. If you do the best you can do, then that's all you can ask for. So. That's so true. Yeah. It's entrepreneurship and owning business, starting businesses is not easy. She's absolutely right. Yeah. There's often not a right time. You've got to just jump out and step out, like you said. And thinking back to your journey, too, and of course, you got a fitness-related degree. How would you say that prepared you, not only for being a anytime fitness owner, any type of fitness franchise owner, for those in the audience, um, but as well as being a trainer and a group fitness instructor? Um, how do you think that degree kind of prepared you? Yeah, I mean, definitely the degree itself helped as far as the education and the knowledge of, like, the human body and exercise physiology and um, biomechanics of the human body and that sort of thing. So as far as from the fitness standpoint of things, I feel like it really prepared me for that. Um, from the business side, you know, I don't know that it really prepared me as far as, you know, owning a business and running a business. Um, there's a lot more to it than just studying in a book um, and you really have no idea what you're getting into until you're actually in it so you know did the fitness degree prepare me for you know personal training and that sort of thing yes absolutely um, consulting with members and putting them on the proper exercise programs and working in the fitness related industry yes um, but as far as like business you know management you know I didn't really didn't really apply to that so this is kind of a new learning experience for me in that respect and what would you say, again, we've got all type of people who tune in to Fitness Fridays, um, including group fitness instructors as well as personal trainers. Perhaps we've got some who are sitting on the fence saying, maybe I should get a degree, should I, should I not? I mean, what advice would you have for those fitness professionals who are considering a degree? Even a general manager, maybe you're looking at getting a, a degree of some sort. What, what advice would you have for those folks? Sure, sure. I mean, obviously I feel like anyone, I mean, you don't need a degree to become a, fit, a personal trainer. You can, you know, buy the materials and take a certification and become a personal trainer, but I think when you actually go through a formal education and get the degree and you just have a lot more, um, you know, hands-on experience as far as um, all the lab work that you do and just, it gets really dives a little bit deeper and just so your knowledge base is a little bit better and which makes you become more confident when you're starting your career in the, in the fitness field. I know um, a lot of people that just go and get their certifications that maybe don't have 
a degree in the fitness related field, they're not as confident about it because they just took that one little course and went and took their certification and think they're good to know, good to go. But um, you know, just the different dynamics of people you come across, and you're working with all sorts of different ages, age groups, and people with medical um, limitations and maybe heart conditions that you need to know about, you need to be educated on because you need to be able to, you know, prescribe these people the right exercise program. So I definitely think that it helped me with that. So if you're thinking about a degree and, um, you know, it's a lot of hard work and you have to build your business from the ground up, um, but just having the knowledge base and knowing that you have that education, I think, does help in the long run. Mm -hmm. Go for it. <laughs> and thinking back again, taking this from a, from a training perspective here for a second, when you think about the results, and I, was, I saw on your Facebook page, you just had a mom who lost more than 100 pounds, and I read that on there. Yeah. Um, and so when you see your members achieving results, I mean, what does that do for you? Like, how does that feel? Oh, I mean, I mean, as an that's... owner, as a manager, as a trainer, as a group fitness instructor, you wear four different hats, obviously. Sure, sure, here. sure. I mean, that's why we're here. You know, we're here for people to reach their goals, to, you know, um, see success, to feel better, to look better, you know, and that's that's why we put this gym in place and, you know, we're here for the local people, for the, you know, uh, people of the town and we hope that everybody sees some sort of results when they join here. And when you see someone that has, like, huge results like that, that just makes you feel like it's all worth it, you know, that all the hard work you put into it is helping other people. You know, which is the main thing. So, see, and I think that's a great segue um, into this concept too. Um, shifting back to, to motives and motivation, you guys have heard me talk about doing things, especially in the fitness world. Having right motives is so important, um, and, and 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 it just shows. I mean, even in terms of your physique, if you're in a leadership role, it's so important for you to model and emulate a fit lifestyle and healthy behaviors. And you specifically, Jenny, when you think about again the members coming in and they're seeing you and they're seeing your training staff. I mean, how important is that for you, yourself, to be fit? I mean, I know you're a marathoner, you've done a lot of different things in your fitness journey, so fitness is important, but we know there's a lot of people out there that, to, 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 put, it, to put it nicely, just aren't exactly good role models of fitness, even though they're in fitness leadership roles. Absolutely. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I've seen, you know, people that call themselves trainers or that are helping people that you know, don't really practice what they preach, and, you know, while, you know, there's different markets of people that you might be more marketable to someone that's, you know, not as fit or not as conditioned, maybe they might be a little more drawn to you, but, you know, from a personal perspective, you know, I don't really think you have a lot of, um, I'm not sure what no, no, this is tough. For, but, yeah, um, this is a... you know, I definitely want to practice what you preach, and how is someone going to believe what you're telling them to do if you're not practicing it yourself, you know, and, I, I strongly believe that you got to practice what you preach. You know, you don't have to be perfect, right? But you should at least be trying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree. And that's I know it's a challenge. It's kind of a sticky question. Yeah. It's kind of an interesting type question, but sure. yeah. I mean, I just think that's so important. Again, this is all about leadership and, and a trainer, a group fitness instructor, even a general manager, assistant manager. Is also anyone in a leadership role. It's so important for your staff members to be able to look at you and say, yeah. You know, this person is, is modeling what they're expecting everyone else to do. Um, and that's just the function of leadership. Sure. And you do see people, too, that maybe have been, you know, overweight or deconditioned at one point and then have gotten to their fitness goals and become personal trainers. And I think oh, those sure. people are great role models for Absolutely. people because they can empathize. And, um, you know, those are great role models for people. But if you've never gone through that transformation, I mean, it's a little <laughs> bit harder to emphasize. Um, but I still think that you should be, you know, practice what you Mm, well said, well said. I couldn't agree more. Um, and also, too, when we think back, and I'm just going to reflect back on that day when I came in, and folks, just to refresh your memory, and I've had a lot of new folks who've, who've now are fans, Facebook fans here, um, who, who haven't heard the story, but I was here, and how I first kind of came and, and, and met Jennifer and came in the facility um, was I was doing undercover research for my book, my fitness book, um, last year, and um, stopped in here um, and was very, very impressed and um, was undercover. So I came in, I had all these layers on, and so I was just trying to say, see, she smiles, she remembers. Um, I had all these layers on, so I was just trying to say, you know, what is it, what is it like to be a new person, you know, not having any type of fitness background, um, being, you know, having weight struggles, even though I tried to, tried to make sure, I tried to pretend that I had some weight struggles, but you caught on to that really quick. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the point that I want to make here is, 
that concept of motives and looking at leadership motives, um, there's a couple of different things that I want to tee this question up by giving them a couple of examples of things that happened that day. There's a couple of things um, that happened. Um, number one, of course, I came in, had layers on, whatever, so I'm getting the tour, very impressed with the facility and this and that. Um, and I said, you know, can, can you please tell me more, give me more information on your personal training? How much does it cost, whatever? Uh, because I said, I, I really think I need to work with a trainer. And she said, no, you don't. <laughs> She's like, no, you don't. And here I was, thinking that, you know, I have on all these layers, and I'm done doing this in other places, and, and no one's catching on, and they're telling me, oh, your train, our training rates are X, Y, Z, and we have X amount of trainers. They're just blowing it off because, again, they're trying to make the sale. They're trying to generate some money um, for training. So they're not really, from a motive standpoint, they're just trying to get a buck, I mean, at the end of the day. Um, so number one, for you to tell me, no, you don't, just the integrity behind that um, was remarkable. Um, and point number two is, I live in Novi. I'm always talking about Novi. This is Walled Lake, so it's about three and a half miles north of where I live. And so we're talking, tell me more about membership, and you know, you can go to all the different facilities when you join, all the different any times, it's wonderful. Um, but what she said to me was, as I left, she said, you know, where do you live? You live close by here? And I said, well, you know, I live in Novi. And she said, well, you know, we actually have a location that's closer to where you are. Why don't you stop by that one and see what you think first before coming back? And so that right there, let me know, again, from a motive standpoint, you're not trying to get a buck. You're not trying to get members at any cost. You truly want others, you want to do the right thing for other people. And, and I just believe, again, the concept of reaping and sowing, some people call it karma, but the success that you achieved have achieved is because of, I think, that mindset of being in it with right motives, wanting to do the right thing, and not chasing a buck. Absolutely. Um, and so, how important is doing the right thing? I mean, obviously, you award winning facility, some of your members went to bat for you to help you win that award. Um, how important is doing the right thing to you? Yeah, I mean, just again, based on the example that you said, you know, granted, this is a business and we're here to make money, but at the end of the day, I mean, I agree with you that, you know, you want to just treat others the way you would want to be treated and no one wants to go anywhere and feel like they're being sold or feel like they have to be pushed into anything. And, and um, ultimately, you know, we do have a lot of people that come check us out and they leave and, um, you know what, they end up usually coming back and signing up because, you know, um, they didn't feel pressured or they didn't feel sold and they went and out and saw the um, competition and, you know, decided that they wanted to sign up here. So it usually comes back and um, we just, you know, keep the faith that it will and just keep doing the right thing. And some people don't and that's okay, but um, you know, I'm just a firm believer, like you said, karma, you know, I always, I don't want anything bad coming back at me. So therefore I always just try to put out, you know, good, good vibes and do the right thing all the time, so. Mm -hmm. And lastly, as lastly, Jenny, what does success look like to you? I mean, obviously you've achieved it, you've done very well. <laughs> Got your degree, spent many years at Lifetime, great foundation of training at the corporate level. Now, successful franchisee. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously I think it's a, still an ongoing process. I think you should never kind of be satisfied. Right. There's always ways to grow and do better. But, um, you know, I think anybody that's successful can say that they're happy with what they're doing. They're doing what they love, um, doing what they're passionate about. And if you can, you know, make couple dollars doing that and be able to pay your bills, I think that's a pretty pretty successful uh, profession. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you again for your time, Jenny. Thank it's you. always great to come Thanks back here. Me. Hopefully, next, a little bit later this year, I can come back and we can talk more specifically about training, get some training tips yes. and things like that. Um, as I know you wear several different hats here, and trainer and group fitness trainer, and all of that is certainly um, one of them. So. Thanks again, and Thank I look you. forward to seeing you again. Continued success, and thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Make it a wonderfully fit day.